G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, as this article from Coin Telegraph says, Bitcoin sentiment at record lows doesn't mean the price will go up. Well, we'll have to look into it a little bit deeper. It's not an easy answer, but from my experience in in the crypto uh, sort of sphere at the very least, but also uh, in trading in general, when sentiment is really, really high and everyone's really pumped and excited about something, it's generally a good time to sort of sell or at least take some profits. And we've seen that in the last just few months, you know, everyone was getting really hyped and pumped and we had a big massive sell off. So now this isn't a 100% golden rule, it doesn't always play out that way. But it does make me think when I see things like this uh, and some further things that we'll have a look at that I think Bitcoin is getting ready to have uh, a substantial move. But let's have a look at this article first of all. So social media sentiment for Bitcoin has slumped to a two year low, yet technical indicators are still saying buy. A number of metrics indicate that social and trading sentiment for Bitcoin is still low despite it breaking above $11,000 a couple of hours ago. It is back below again right now though. On-chain analytics provider, Santaniment, uh, yeah, sorry, San, Santaniment, oh, I don't even know how to say that, Santinment, has revealed that weighted social uh, sentiment for Bitcoin is at its lowest level for two years. The metric takes into account the overall volume for, of Bitcoin mentions on Twitter and compares the ratio of positive versus negative uh, commentary on the platform. Social uh, sentiment surged a few months ago when Bitcoin started its strong recovery following the mid-March pandemic uh, induced market crash. However, for most of May, June and July, when the asset was consolidating in the low 9K range, it fell into negative territory again. The analytics provider noted that counterintuitively, negative sentiment at extremely low levels uh, color uh, correlates with price rises, whereas extreme highs correlate with uh, price retracements. So it is interesting, and you can have a look down here that it's obviously low at the moment. And again, everyone got excited when Bitcoin sort of, you know, broke out from that sort of, you know, high three thousand, low four thousand dollar level after the crash. Got a little bit excited, and especially we got up to about that kind of eleven and a half, nearly twelve thousand dollar range. Everyone was super pumped, and what happens? Boom, the market took a big old nosedive. Uh, and that's what makes me think this is probably what's going to happen at the moment. People are still a little bit unsure. We're still kind of ranging and everyone's, you know, still worried that we might roll over and, you know, cover that CME gap. And that is absolutely still possible. I am just get the gut feeling that it's a little bit less likely at the moment. And I know I say gut feeling a lot, but that's what I trust. There's just something inside of me telling me, you know, this is what's possibly going to happen. And it doesn't come from just that. It's from all the things that I've read, seen and heard as well that gives me that gut feeling. And really, for me, I just, I believe in trusting me. I believe in trusting myself, going with my gut instincts. Most of the time, it pushes me in the right, right direction. Not always. I can be wrong and I have been wrong. But generally, again, I've made it to this stage in my life by trusting my gut instincts. I'm going to continue to follow them. But let's have a look at the fear and uh, greed index. Where are we at at the moment? So it's about 48. It's still kind of neutral, but leaning more to that sort of fear side. So we're not even into the kind of positive territory. We're a little bit under just being neutral. Not much, don't get me wrong, but a little bit there. So again, sentiment is down at the moment. People are a little bit fearful. We're probably in uh, in line for a bit of a pump, but we'll just have to wait and see. Sometimes it is correct. Sometimes it's on that little bit uh, fearful side because we are about to go lower. But here's some things that makes me think we're ready for a pump. Another Coin Telegraph article: Bitcoin ATMs surged by 87 percent in the past year to surpass 10,000 globally. Now that doesn't really have a lot to do a lot to do with sentiment uh, directly. But indirectly, it does. There's more Bitcoin ATMs. There's almost 100% more in the last year. That says that this is building. Something's happening. More and more people are wanting to buy Bitcoin. And not everyone, you know, uh, is signed up with Binance and your local exchanges and things like that. But they see a Bitcoin ATM. They go swipe their card, put some money in or whatever they do. And they get a little ticket telling them that they've got Bitcoin. 
doubling in a year, that's pretty impressive. So again, this is what makes me, uh, I'm, I'm extremely confident, if not basically 100% confident, we are in the next bull run. We're getting ready to surge, but it's not just a straight line upwards. There's you know ups and downs, peaks and troughs throughout it. But I believe with, again, they're saying sentiment is low over here. The crypto uh, feed and greer index is a little bit on the bearish side. You know, it's still neutral, but more bearish. I think chances are we are about to go higher. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Now, here's another interesting article that I found. 49 US states unveil unified regulation for cryptocurrency firms. So in the states, every different state had a different rule, and that's why it was really hard for, you know, like Binance and, and other exchanges to operate within all the states of America. Well, now they've basically unified it and said there's just one law for all the states. So that's very, very interesting that they are basically now making it easy for cryptocurrencies rather than making it harder, which is what they were doing only a couple of years ago. Like back in 2017, even 2018, you know, banks and uh, regulation, it just stifled uh, any kind of innovation that cryptocurrencies could have possibly had. And now, again, it's these kind of things that are giving me the gut feeling, this is ready to explode. It's going to go boom. And you know, I probably shouldn't say explode and go boom because that's not what's going to happen uh, in the short term future. But once all the big businesses start to get in and particularly once retail start to flood back in again like they did in late 2017, you know, we're going to see prices that we probably just can't really wrap our heads around. And unfortunately, the people who get in late are probably going to sell when it starts to go down. They won't hold you know, realizing that, you know, yes, you might lose money for a couple of years, but most likely in four years time, you'll have, you know, nearly doubled your money again. And they're the ones that are going to get burnt. But anyway, there is something interesting with this is I don't have an article here, but Kraken, the exchange Kraken, they have jumped on top of this and they are now regulated as a bank in the US. The first cryptocurrency bank within the United States of America and regulated now because of these rules across all the states uh, in United States. Before, you know, as I said, every single state you needed to get a license, you know, and all the rest of it. Now, there's one set of rules. You're a licensed bank in one state. You're a licensed bank in all of them. And Kraken, well done to them. They are the first cryptocurrency bank in America. I don't know about the world. There could be some places uh, overseas that might have them, but in the States, and they're you know, the big dog of the financial hub of the world. So that's great for cracking and well done. Something else I found. Uh, this is pretty interesting. So BZX, they got hacked not long ago. They've managed to get back their $8.1 million uh, worth of crypto that was hacked. Uh, so where does it say? So basically, uh, what they did was they tracked down all the uh, funds uh, and cornered the the hacker, and the hacker has now returned all of the uh, coins. Now, they didn't go on to say exactly who the hacker was or anything like that. They haven't publicly named them, and my guess is they're probably not going to do too much about it. They've got the money back. You know, I, I don't think they'll go on to have that person charged, but, you know, I could be wrong. We'll have to wait and see. In saying that, I do think the days of hacking you know, exchanges, which will now basically become banks, you know, with that previous article. I think the days of you hacking them and them just getting the money back and being happy are pretty much over. I think from here on in, they will be investigated. Uh, you know, they'll be tracked down and they'll be charged regardless. But, you know, very good for uh, BZX that they could get their, their, you know, their funds back because 8.1 million, that's a fair amount. That's not chump change. And, you know, Sad story for the hacker. Obviously, he wasn't that good a hacker uh, that he was able to, you know, funnel it off and, you know, put it through washing machines, as they say, and all the rest of it. But last, well, not quite lastly, but market cap. Still sitting around that kind of $350 billion mark. And again, Bitcoin, we're at that sort of $8,000, uh, $10,800 level. We've really struggled to break through that $11,000 mark. We have kind of wicked through it, but we're getting hard rejections from it at the moment, but also anything that goes anywhere near $10,000 uh, gets bought up very, very quickly. So it's just that tight range. And Ethereum, you know, we're holding above 370. We were above 400. We're up near the $450 level. So we've still got a ways to go. 
And look out, XRP, 25 cents. It has been up to around about 26, 27 cents, but then it dropped down to 24 cents. So, yeah, impressive. And again, polka dot, you know, out of nowhere, you know, number five. That is quite quite amazing that they have uh, got into the you know the top 100 is not easy to get into let alone you know the top 50 and then the top 10 and now they are in the top five so well done polka dot still down a little bit from where they were but they're up 10 percent, which is good so just a quick uh check of the the charts as we can see well above 10,500 but we get up to here, and this is basically $11,000 right here. Well, this is a little bit under $10,944. We're getting hard re rejections from there. It's it's not going above uh, that $11,000 mark. But that's not to say we're not getting ready to just, you know, have a, a mass explosion upwards. But look, you know, I, I don't want to try and convince you either way of what's going to happen. You know, it's just my gut feeling. I don't offer financial advice. This channel isn't about giving you financial advice. This is just all about my journey in cryptocurrency and what I'm seeing and what I'm planning on doing. If you decide to follow me, you know, that's your choice. Don't do it because I'm doing it. You know, if I get wrecked, you know, then that's my fault. If you get wrecked because you follow me, well, <laughs> that's your fault. That's not my fault at all. But We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, things are up a little bit uh, at the moment in the market. You know, we've still got a long way to sort of recover all of these losses at the moment. But altcoins, you know, they definitely bled off a little bit there. And that's what makes me think it's going to be put into Bitcoin uh, and we're going to see a bit of a pump. But anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. And I'll see you next time.